2030 is a number, a, a date, a year that comes up and seems to bring together all these different subjects. If you look, for instance, at the last time they said the, the world um, uh, has so many years to, to save the planet, um, then you'll hit 2030. Look at Kurzweil. He wants uh, the process of the human brain being connected to AI by 2030, for that to, to be underway by 2030. Uh, then you look at Agenda 2030, of course, the the, uh, the UN, which is basically the Great Reset uh, in, um, in, in one form. So 2030 is a, a, a year where they want this to be really moving uh, to a point where they believe it will be unstoppable. And that's why we have the period between now and then to bring an end to this. And that means that we have to put aside everything else and make this the absolute priority of our lives. If people say, oh, my, uh, my kids are more important. Well, actually, your kids are more important, but they are the targets of this, this whole conspiracy. So by putting, uh, standing up to this and refusing to acquiesce with this first, you're putting your kids first, you're putting your family first, you're putting the future first, putting everything first. So, you know, we've got to move in far greater numbers, it's happening, but far greater numbers from seeing it to ceasing to cooperate with it. You don't have to scream no, you just have to mean it. No, I'm not doing it. No, I'm not doing it. And let's realize that whatever they want to throw at us in terms of intimidation is far, far worse and more sinister than anything else they can come up with in terms of intimidation. Well, you, you won't be able to travel. I won't travel then. You won't be able to do this. Well, do it then. Do that. Don't, don't do that either. I'm just not doing it. Whatever you try to intimidate me with, I'm not having this jab because I know that's the end when I do. They want to divide and rule us. Because this is it's a simple case of mathematics. If you go to the core of the core of the core of this global cult, you get them into a single room. And the vast majority of people that are imposing this fascism on the world have no idea it's being coordinated. They're just doing what they're told without question and believing somehow that it's it's justified. They don't censor with the hysteria that they do for a laugh and a bit of fun. And they don't even do it to posture their own uh, illusory power, illusory power, which is that which we give to them. They do it because they've got no choice. Their narrative is ludicrous. What they're asking us to believe and what they're asking us to do, telling us to do, is ludicrous. It's everything to do with control and that's becoming more obvious to more and more people all the time. And therefore, um, they have to protect their ludicrous narrative in the only way they can by preventing its exposure in the, to the greatest audience that they can. But it can't be stopped if people are willing not to bow to their illusory power and not to bow to their intimidation. You know, you get these celebrities, oh God save us from celebrities, um, who are pushing the agenda, virtue signaling, because they, they know their careers are over if they don't. When people start to grow a pair and grow a backbone, those that haven't already, lots of people are, are pushing back on this, but there's vast, vast numbers that are not. And realize that this is not a game. It's not a phase. It's not something that's going to go away eventually. This is the cult um, running for home. And we've got to now stand up to this and say here and no further and start rolling it back. If, if, if we're not going to stand up and protect the kids, then what's the point? What self-respect is left? What dignity is left? Well, you know, some of us have been pointing out for a long time that the control of the world is 
centralized, uh, that uh, there are networks of the global network in each country, and their job is to impose the will of the center of the network, the spider as I call it, on their particular country. And you know, as I've traveled around the world, uh, I've been seeing the same things being introduced in different con countries, different cultures, basically in the same period, and some of the legislation even being worded the same. It's because it's centrally controlled. Well, you know, you, you can look for a solution or you can remove the cause of the problem. And if you remove the cause of the problem, the problem must disappear because its cause is gone. And look through the entirety of known human history anyway, and you see the same recurring sequence. The few controlling the many by the many acquiescing to the few. And if you look at, as I was getting into uh, earlier, if you look at this symbolic, or it's not even symbolic, it's very accurate, pyra pyramidal hierarchy of human society, you've got the tiny few at the top, the inner core of this cult, which um, have this agenda uh, for the constant centralization of power and the constant centralization of everything. And the more you centralize power, the more power the few have over the many at each point of centralization. That's why things like globalization are all being generated by this cult. So they uh, impose their will, their agenda, on the level of the pyramid below them. And that level acquiesces to that um, imposition and imposes it on the level below them. And so it goes on, and it's very soon after you leave the peak of the pyramid, that you are meeting levels of the hierarchy that have no idea there is a cult. They have no idea there is a peak of the pyramid. All they're doing is taking impositions from the levels above them and acquiescing to them and imposing them on the level below them. And then you come all the way down this pyramid in imposition acquiescence, imposition acquiescence, and you meet the mass of the population at the bottom of the pyramid. And if we, at that point, and this is the key, this is the answer staring us in the bloody face. If we, um, as a population, then acquiesce to the impositions of the level of the pyramid, ultimately being dictated to by the, the, the single room at the top, um, and we acquiesce to the impositions of government and authority and law enforcement, if we acquiesce to them, we create or complete a circuit, a circuit between the tiny few at the top of the pyramid and the mass of the population. And that circuit of imposition, acquiescence, imposition, acquiescence means that those few people in that room have imposed their will on the entirety of the global population. So the answer is, we break the circuit. We break the circuit by not acquiescing with authority simply because it's authority. What is it telling us to do? What is it asking us to do? Does it make sense? No, then I'm not doing it. Is it designed to impose control on my life and my, my family's life. Yes, no, I'm not doing it then. And, and it's this reflex action um, response to authority of obeying that is the cause of the few controlling the many. And it starts very early. You get people, uh, young kids, you put them into school at the earliest possible age. And from that moment on, they are faced with an authority. An authority which, if you obey, well, l life is kind of um, okay. I mean, you've not got a mind of your own, but, but, you know, they leave you alone. But if you don't obey, well, there's a problem. There's a, a, a problem with your uh, disruptive influence in the classroom. You're asking questions. You won't accept what you're being told. And, and very early on, right at the start of the school uh, uh, life, that you've got an authority figure who's telling you when you can, when you have to be there, when you can leave, when you can eat, when you can talk, when you can go to the toilet. And there are sanctions if you don't obey. And so the whole process has started.
to get you into a state of reflex action, acquiescence to authority, which they want you to take through your life.